Survivor's ready. Go! Job is spoken. This island is pretty much full of only two things. Snakes and rats. The fake dead grandmother could easily go down as the dirtiest thing ever to be done in this game. I am the king, and I am back. But I've got the million dollar check written already. I mean, I'm, I'm the winner. The winner of the first Survivor competition is... Rich. Direct from Hobart, it's now time for the only dedicated radio show in Australia devoted to the hit TV show Survivor, bringing you the latest news and the biggest interviews from the king of reality television. It's Survivor Oz, and here's your host, Ben Waterworth. Hello everybody and welcome once again to Survivor Oz, Australia's number one TV film podcast continuing on our survivor san juan del sur exit interviews as we bring to you the final five that is right the final five players of the 29th season we are now into the top three the third place finisher of survivor san juan del sur please welcome to survivor oz the one and only missy Payne. missy welcome to survivor oz Hi. It's a pleasure to have you here, Missy. It's uh, no doubt been a pretty interesting 24 hours for you after everything uh, from the finale right through to a day filled with interviews. Uh, have you had any much sleep in the last 24 hours? <laughs> Not much sleep. I mean, you know, with the uh, with the finale and reunion show and all the interviews we did last night and then we... Truly, I mean, barely sprinted back to the hotel before we ended up at some wild and crazy party that kept me out <laughs> way past my bedtime. And, um, yeah, then I've started bright-eyed and bushy-tailed this morning at about 7. Wow, wow. Do you, do you lose track of how many of these interviews you've done today? <laughs> I've completely lost track, um, for sure. It's been certainly entertaining. Um, and then I feel like, you know, that I've repeated myself <laughs> quite a bit, which is fine. I'm telling the same story, but, you know, it, sometimes I get to make it a little, with a new little twist. Yes, yes. Well, I expect new twists and also, um, you know, I'm sure I've got the most unique accent today, as you kind of mentioned to me just I before. I love it. <laughs> love your accent. We like to make it a little bit special. But, uh, look, I mean, clearly, uh, you know, you make it right to the end and no doubt disappointing not to come away with the million dollars. But, I mean, kind of reflecting on everything, how it all played out. Uh, I mean, can you sort of obviously hold your head up high now and be proud despite not winning the game? Oh my gosh, yes. I feel like I um, really and truly climbed Mount Everest. It was such an accomplishment for me, um, especially, you know, coming in kind of as the underdog and people not really believing, okay, the oldest female, you know, what what can she do and what can she bring to the table, kind of. Um, and, and just being able to say, I finished it on one leg, um, it's, it's a pretty huge accomplishment, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's the first in the history of Survivor for somebody to finish on one leg, uh, quite literally. Yeah, so, there you go. <laughs> there's a record that you can have. I mean, the, the big shock from last night, of course, um, that we saw prior to the tri- final Tribal Council, Natalie playing her idol, save Jacqueline, then Baylor obviously was voted out. I mean, take us through that moment, Missy. I mean, as soon as Jacqueline was safe, do you sit there and assume it's you going, not Bela? Well, you know, it's interesting because Natalie and I had this little sign and signal that we always did, and that was a pinky promise. And we would squeeze three times before every single tribal just to basically, you know, kind of seal the deal that our bond is our bond. And um, there was only two times in the game that that didn't happen. One was when uh, I was assisting with the Jeremy vote off, and two was the night that Baylor got voted off. And so I knew something was up when I walked into that tribal. I just didn't exactly know how to put my thumb on it. Um, and so interestingly enough, when she stood up to play the idol for Jacqueline, I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, I'm going home. And she said, it's not, you're not going home, just like that. So I was like, okay, it's Baylor. <laughs> wow. Wow, and it's an amazing thing, of course. And, uh, I mean, it seemed kind of interesting, the reaction there, that uh, obviously you're upset that Baylor's being voted out there, but it was kind of like in a way that you said you were relieved. I mean, was that basically you thought you had a better chance of winning, um, you know, without Baylor being there? 
Oh, absolutely. You know, um, as much fun as it would have been to say Baylor and I were the first couple in Survivor to end up together in the final three, it probably wouldn't have been great for game strategy. It was better for one of us to be on the jury so you could secure, you know, a vote and then potentially campaign, um, you know, the jury because the jury has a lot of power. And when they get together, they really create their own tribe, which is, I mean, it was so apparent that that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, I mean, Natalie did me a favor. I didn't really have to make a a decision how that was going to go down. And, you know, by that point in the game, Baylor was like, well, yeah, I want to go to the final three with you guys. And so it was more of a, okay. And so when Natalie just, it was like ripping the Band-Aid off. You know, I didn't really have to go real slow and try to figure it out. She did it for me. (laughs) Well, I mean, yeah, we spoke to John uh, earlier this week about um, kind of, you know, plans if the couples got to a certain point. And he did mention that, you know, him and Jacqueline and yourself and Baylor had had conversations about sacrificing one of the pairs going into the tribal council, kind of mentioning that. Because it also brings, as clearly you got a vote from Baylor, it brings a guaranteed vote, doesn't it? Exactly. Yes, exactly. And, yes, John had kind of started the, um, the concocting of that, um, keeping he and I in and letting Baylor and Jacqueline be on the jury to um, basically secure a vote for us and, again, you know, campaign. But, yeah, it was kind of a crazy thought that we were designing the true fate of how this Survivor Season 29 would end. You know, that's never happened before. Nobody just stands up and goes, okay, here's the design, this is what it looks like, and this is how it's going to end. Yeah, that's a very good way of looking at it, actually. I mean, did you go into the final Tribal Council perhaps expecting more votes than just from Baylor? I mean, were there some people that you thought would vote for you, perhaps? Um, I mean, I really thought that maybe Keith, for sure. I knew that Alec and Wes... um, uh, had unfortunately, you know, had drank in the punch, man. They had already been moved over to the Reed Josh um, manipulation of their new Ponderosa tribe. So, but if anybody else was going to vote for me, I would have assumed it would have been um, Keith. And, you know, if John had been so ticked off at me, to be honest, out of fairness for who played a better game, he probably would have voted for me too. I just I think when you're in the heat of the moment and so emotional and blood versus water is so different than other seasons, you know, you already kind of have a foggy view of how you're going to make decisions. So, but yeah, I was, uh, you know, I mean, I wasn't surprised that I only had Baylor's vote at that point. Um, but I don't know. I mean, he didn't really read all of them either, but I, I still am pretty positive that. Keith voted for Natalie. Yeah, it was interesting mentioning with John because he was saying the other day kind of how it really wasn't shown the depth of your relationship and he was mentioning how it kind of brought closure seeing the episode last week when he went that you were very much against him going and that you kind of only went along with it because really you sort of had to. So, I mean, when you got back to Ponderosa after that final tribal, did you pull John aside straight away and be like, hey, I didn't really want to vote you out, it kind of had to go that way? Yeah, I tried. I mean, the final tribal was so different for the three of us um, when we got back to Ponderosa. You know, I had a cast on my leg, and medical was there waiting for me. So I didn't get a chance to – it was so late in the evening, and, you know, everybody left the next morning at 6 a.m. I tried briefly to have a conversation, but, you know, he hadn't seen Jacqueline in however many days either, so she pretty much cornered him and and took him, and and, he kind of stood there and shrugged his shoulders, and, you know, I said, I really – I would really like to talk to you, and – uh, that didn't happen. You know, it just didn't. But it, since we've been out in Los Angeles, he has come up to me multiple times and said, man, I, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was so silent. Um, you know, I feel really bad. And we say, I really love you. And, you know, we have such a great relationship. Um, and we do. We had an amazing, amazingly cool bond. I think everybody, you know, needs another mom in their life. And, and you don't really always want to tell your mom everything. So it's nice to have somebody else. Um, they can step in and you can talk about stuff with. Fantastic. We love hearing that. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of the ankle, how is it? Uh, what was wrong with it? All recovered now from it all? No, not quite. Um, I'm still in rehab. I'm, I'm doing some physical therapy and, and some other um, avenues of healing because it was a level three sprain. It was not a break, but it certainly has been a pickle uh, uh, of a time to try to get it to heal. And the doctor said when I got back it would be a full six months of recovery before, you know, it would be pretty much back to good. But wow. even then, I'd have to take it easy for a while. I was like, oh, my gosh, it probably would have been better just to break it. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, at this point, because I love to run. That's my exercise of choice, and it's 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 made it quite a challenge yes. to um, get back into that. Yes, I'm guessing kind of, you know, the whole cheer uh, aspect of your career has been put on hold for a little bit as well then. Uh, yeah, thank <laughs> the Lord. I have an amazing staff um, in my cheerleading business that can help help with all of that because yeah i can't i can't do as much as i could right now <laughs> i can imagine uh one uh, final point that i just want to bring up we're, we're going to be speaking to baylor in a couple of days about her game but uh, obviously myself a lot of our listeners are fairly in love with her song sticky situation now i need to ask you missy what, what's your thoughts on sticky situation do you listen to this or are you kind of sick of hearing it <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love Sticky Situation. As a matter of fact, it is um, my favorite song, and it's such a cute music video that, that she's made, but um, it also played into the whole Survivor thing, because we got ourselves in so many Sticky Situations, <laughs> we all kind of teased about, oh my gosh, hashtag Sticky Situation, yes. and so, you know, post-show, post-filming, um, most everybody's gotten their hands on it, including Jeff Probst, who mentioned during a commercial last night to her, man, I watched your music video. That's awesome. Wow, Baylor. <laughs> Such a great song. Fantastic. I was, I was disappointed she didn't get asked to perform because I know Chase uh, performed back in Nicaragua. Yeah. And, and, come on, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, come on, Jeff. Why didn't you let her perform? Yes. You know, um, I, she'll have opportunities galore. I'm sure that because people now are so aware of the song and it's all over the place that I, I feel like that somebody's going to call her to perform somewhere. So she, I, I'm, I'm sure she'll have the opportunity, but it sure would have been cool for her to be able to do that on the live show. She can come perform it on our show anytime. She's, she's welcome too. Missy. All right. We'll love it. <laughs> well, Missy, I will say thank you. And I just wanted to point out to you that no doubt every single interview featured somebody asking you about the situation with Reed, and I wanted to deliberately avoid it today because I'm sure you're sick of that question. So. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You're yeah, welcome. Like you're welcome. <laughs> but I appreciate your time on Survivor Oz, and look, We'll get you back on in the show one day, uh, one day, no doubt, in the future. And we'll go a little bit more in depth into your game and everything else that happened. But thank you for chatting to Australia today. I would love it. Thank you so, so much. And there you have it. Missy Payne, uh, fantastic chat there. And great to get her on the show and hear her side of things. And, of course, if you wish to hear Baylor's exit interview or the day this has been released, uh, you can hear Baylor's uh, exit interview. We had that uh, earlier than we anticipated. We thought that was initially happening next week. But Baylor and Keith were swapped. So if you're listening to this today, the uh, Missy or any of the other four interviews and we're expecting to see Keith's because we did advertise it, there was a last minute switch and uh, yes, so Keith will happen next week. If you're listening to this not on the day that it was released, uh, then that doesn't bother you at all, does it? So there you go. Uh, thank you for tuning in to our Missy Payne at San Mandel Sir exit interview. As always, you can subscribe to the podcast via iTunes, via Stitcher, via TuneIn Radio or any service that allows you to subscribe to a podcast.